I'm going to go, go ahead and get started on this uh, painting and see what we can do with it today. So as I was saying, uh, this was originally a quick sketch that I did real quickly on a small 5x7 canvas. And, um, and it came from this original this original photograph of a blueberry field. This is, these are blueberry bushes late in the season. Most of the blueberries are gone and uh, we've got some, you can tell there's some dry grasses in there. And I don't remember exactly the location of this, but it was a photo I took at some point. And anyway, what I really liked about the image was this, this background, this distance that you've got going on that's very kind of hazy and it's great for practicing getting that that distance um, that perspective when things get lighter and bluer and more neutral as you go back into the distance and uh, also the other thing we think about is the darks are lighter and you can really see that in this image where all the darks way back here in this tree and the dark in the trees and the dark shadows are quite a bit lighter than their equivalents here in these trees and these shadows. These shadows are much darker and that also really gives us that atmospheric per perspective. I went ahead and made some changes to it and, and I was experimenting with this one with using an underpainting in a bright color and having that glimmer through. So as you can see, I, I started with the canvas being a bright orange and then th that little bit of glimmering throughout the painting gives it, I think, a sense of liveliness that's a lot of fun. So let's start by doing that. Let's get that orange on our canvas and let that start drawing. Um, I don't always do a toning of the canvas, but this time I want to do that because that was a a big part of that painting. Um, so I'm going to start with my red. I want to make an orange and I want to make a bright orange and this is going to go over the whole canvas so I'm going to go ahead and do a good amount of it. I've got my uh, Hansa yellow medium and my naphthal red light and I'm going to use quite a bit of that yellow to start with. I want to lighten it up a little bit. I don't want it to be that dark. So I'm going to go with some white in there. You notice I'm using my a bigger brush because I'm going to be covering uh, the whole canvas and so I don't want to use too small of a brush because it'll just take more time. And I want to get this to be a real yellowish orange and you'll find when you're working with yellow that you have to use quantitatively more of the yellow than you do of the other colors because it just doesn't stain as strongly. It's not as strong of a pigment. So go ahead and get enough yellow in there till you start seeing a yellow orange color and that's a fairly light. Now what I'm going to do is look at that a little bit. I'm, as I'm brushing it on I'm being sure that it's staying pretty thin. I don't want this to be thick because we're going to be painting over it and I want it to dry fairly quickly but I do want to get enough yellow in that and you notice what I did there I've got a big pile going here and as opposed to but I want the whole color to be yellower so instead of working into that big pile where I'd have to add a whole bunch of yellow to make it yellow enough I've just taken a little bit of it over to the side and then I can add my yellow into it without wasting so much paint We'll use that color later, but uh, yeah, that's more like what I wanted. I want a real yellow orange to this. So what I'm going to do with this orange up here that I've already added, that's a little too not yellow enough, is while it's wet, I'm going to take some straight yellow on my brush and brush it into it. And that'll, you can also do that. You can mix right on the canvas versus having to mix on your palette first. Either way works as long as your paint is still wet. And working with acrylics, you know, 
they're going to dry quickly, so you can't always count on that paint still being wet. But go ahead and use some firm pressure here and push that paint along so you don't have too much, too thick of a layer on your canvas. We just don't want a thick layer here because we want to be able to go right on and paint and we're not going to be able to do that until this dries. So we're going to keep it thinned out as much as possible. So as you work with acrylics, you'll find that I, you'll notice I'm still brushing this and I can continue to do that for maybe a couple of minutes if I need to, and then it's going to start drying. And you know, that really depends also on your climate and you know how much humidity you've got going on in your in your particular room you're painting in what kind of the weather that day i've painted outdoors sometimes on rainy days when the even the acrylics just didn't dry they acted like oils which is a lot of fun you'll notice as i'm going back in i'm continuing to add more yellow to that pick up a little of this darker as i need it to make more paint you know, that's something that is also kind of different to get used to when you're working with acrylics is that you use a lot of paint. It just, the canvas is going to soak it up and there's just something about the, the medium that you use, you just use a lot of paint. And that's okay. You just have to get used to that because I think that's something that I see beginners doing a lot when I'm trying to teach them is they'll have little tiny bits of paint on their palette and little tiny bits of paint on their brush. And so they spend a, a lot unnecessary amount of time just trying to get the paint to cover and end up with the, you know, the canvas or other colors showing through. It's just not covering sufficiently. And that's just a matter of getting enough paint on your brush and uh, being generous with that paint. I know sometimes that can be tough uh, if your paint is expensive. So sometimes, you know, it's good to use the less expensive paints. Just know that they don't have as much pigment in them and you're actually going to end up using more paint because you're going to have to do more layers in order to get them to cover. You'll notice when you put down a brush stroke, it's kind of see-through. And uh, that has to do with the quality of paint. These are golden acrylic paints, which, uh, which I really enjoy using and I think work really well. Um, but they are also a little more pricey. So there's a lot, and there's a lot of other, um, I'm just chatting for a while while this dries. So there's a lot of other things that we're working on here. We talked about how your darks in the background are going to be lighter. We talked about atmospheric per perspective. We're going to be working on dark and light. So that's, you know, people always often ask me, how do you get things to look like it's so light? You know, you can really see the light in them. And that's just all about contrast. So if you want something to show up as very light, you have to have something dark against it which is what's happening with these dark trees and these dark silhouettes. They really give that opportunity for this light to shine. And because when you're working with acrylics especially, and in really any kind of pigment, the tendency when we want something to be lighter is to add more and more white. And the problem with that is that as you add more white, you also dilute the, the chroma of the paint. So the paint gets less colorful, it gets more pastel-y and chalky as you go lighter and lighter to get the uh, how light you want it to be. Whereas in nature, light can also be very colorful. You can have a very light, bright uh, image. And that's what we're trying to recreate here on the canvas, but we're not painting with light, so we have to make allowances. We have to change the way that we're doing things to do that. Um, and the way we do that is that we establish the same relationship between dark and light without going all the way white. So, you know, you can kind of see in this photograph that we're working from 
that this is pretty much pure white and that has to do with the photograph because it's gonna I was focusing more down here in the shadow so it's gonna blow out the lights and and nothing's gonna be left up there but in order to get the comparison of dark to light sometimes you just have to go darker with your darks than you actually see in nature in order to be able to find that happy medium in light values with your colors where you can still maintain enough chroma enough brightness of color without and still have it read as light because the comparison between the light area and the dark area is the same so there's a big jump between light and dark so sometimes you just have to push those darks even darker than they are in nature in order to be able to keep your color in your light areas hope that makes a little bit of sense but I think you'll see that more as we go along just to quickly go over them I've got Hansa yellow medium Indian yellow naphtha red light alizarin crimson ultramarine blue and phthalo blue green shade and that's pretty much my normal palette it's what I usually have on my palette so that's nothing different there it's basically a cool and a warm version of each of the primary colors and then I but I also like to try to get a darker and a lighter version of those primary colors and then we can mix all the other things that we uh, that we need in there so what I'm going to do this is getting it dry enough that I can start doing some drawing I'm going to use this I'm using um, a flat brush this is about a quarter inch it's a small one about a quarter inch wide um, when you're working with acrylic paints you want to work with a firm brush this is a synthetic and you don't want a soft brush like you'd use with watercolors and you don't necessarily want a bristle brush like you'd use with oils so a, a firm synthetic is going to give you the ability to push that paint around and uh, be able to do what you need to do so let's let's see if we can draw in a little bit of what we're going to do with this image I'm just going to use my ultramarine blue you can use any color whatsoever it doesn't really matter and I'm going to look at my image and I'm just going to look I'm going to put in some roadmap don't think drawing as much as as you want to think roadmap where are my big big, big area is going to be and the, the real focal point in this in this one is this background lighter sunlit area and I like to put a focal area on the thirds of the painting so if you imagine that your image is cut into thirds horizontally and vertically then where those uh, thirds intersect is a good place to put your focal point and that's kind of down in this area where the light meets the dark but this entire space here is along that third line pretty much okay so the top of it here is about a third down so I'm going to put in here's going to be the top of my trees in the background and then below them here's the bottom of those trees here's where these trees are coming in to the side we've got a little below the half let's put out in here where this is going to come down here's my trees just give yourself a little road map so here's where these i'm going to raise this a little bit to here and i'm going to bring that up a little bit so this is where your your hand starts getting used to the image that you're about to create it starts exploring I really find painting to be as much about exploring and about the process as it is about getting any sort of finished product out of it and this process of drawing is where it starts is where the exploring starts and I'm not nothing in this is 
set in stone. When you're working with acrylics, so really the wonderful part of it is you can redo whatever you want to do and paint over it and start again. So there's no worries. There's not, you don't have to do it right the first time or throw it away and start again. So I've also got a little bit of mountains back here, which are super visible in this painting. But All right, so what are these shapes I've got? I've got, let's see if I can make this where you can see it. I've got, here's a, a shape of these big trees coming in here like this. They're going to come down here. You can see that this line here is about halfway down your canvas. So this is the top. Blueberry bushes, these are actually blueberry bushes. And then they come down and the end of them is a little past the halfway point there. So that's what you're looking at. That's what you're just drawing in. Just to give yourself the big shapes and to know where you're gonna go with those. So once we get those big shapes done, the next thing we're gonna do is block in our values. So that's that's what we do next. Once we do the drawing, so we've got the toning our canvas, which in this case we're doing a bright orange, and then we're doing our drawing, which is just a road map. And next we are going to do the block-in. And like, as I was saying, the block-in is about values. It's a, about establishing those values. So we're establishing the lights and darks. How light is this area going to be? How dark is this area going to be? And this one is fairly simple because we have this entire lighter area and then all of this in here is in shadow. And the only thing that makes it interesting or brings out the interest is the fact that we've changed colors within the shadow. And then we have these little strips of light coming in that kind of mirror the little strips of shadow in the background. So it's a very simple image but it should be a lot of fun to put together. And I think I think we're we're going to do a block in but we're also going to kind of move straight in to the rest of the painting because this is a real loosely painted uh image. It's not we're not going to go to a real strong finish on it. Though so we'll see. We never know what we're going to do till we do it, right? That's the fun of it. All right. Well, let's let's go paint some of this here. So for the sky, let's start with some white. Whenever you're working with very light colors, you want to start with your white because it, you'll find you don't need that much of your pigments. And if you start with the dark colors, you, you usually end up with too much. So what I'm doing is white with a little bit of both alizarin or both ultramarine and thalo blue. But whatever blue you're using, go with that. What I try to do when I'm painting a sky, I always try to give us a gradation. So from darker at the top to lighter at the bottom. And so if you start with your mixed up combination blue, let's just give, give it a look and see what we think about it. I always want to test that color on your canvas versus testing it just going from your palette because it's going to look different and especially colors with this bright bright orange are going to look very different. The comparison of colors is uh, really makes a difference. I'm going to add a touch more of my thalo blue. The thalo is a cooler blue. It's also much more staining. It's a very strong color. All right. I'm working I'm going to work fairly quickly with this. I don't want to cover up all the orange in order to get that that fun effect that I had in the sketch. So I'm going to add a little more white as I go down. So that gives us our gradation. So I started darker and then as I move down to the horizon I'm going to add more white to it. All right and let's blend down with this. Now, you notice I'm going over the lines of my 
of my drawing. You don't want to stop right at the edge of the lines. You don't want to color in the lines. Making a little bit more of this slightly darker blue. I'm kind of walk, walking a fine line here because I want some of the orange to flow through, but I also want to uh, get the color in there. So you notice what I'm doing now is I'm rinsing my brush, but I'm leaving a little bit of water on my brush, and that way I can blend. So I'm starting from the bottom and I'm blending up, and this is pulling off some of that paint, and it's having that letting that orange really shine through. And I'm just playing with this until I get what I want in terms of how much I want it to shine through. Also what it's done is because this background is still slightly wet, when I added the water to it, you can see it's picked up some of that orange. It's reactivated that orange. And I don't particularly want that going on. So ixnay on the outer way there. We don't want too much water because we want that orange to stay in its place. Let me get some of this. See if we can cover back up that orange. Whenever you don't want to pick up the paint that's on your canvas, the thing that you want to do is take your brush and have it very horizontal to the canvas. So the, the flatter you hold your brush, the more it's just going to let the paint stay on the canvas. All right, I'm going to I'm going to leave that and I think that we might find we like that color later. That little bit of orange peeking through. So, let's see. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up some of our background hill here. So, we've got ultramarine blue and phthalo blue again, or whatever blues you have. And all we're doing is going for a slightly darker version of the sky. And I'm going to put a tad bit of this orange in there because I want to neutralize that color a little bit. And when you're thinking about neutralizing, neutralizing means graying a color down. And when you're thinking about doing that, what you're going to do is think about, I've got a blue going on here. And remember, if you take all three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and add them together, you're going to get a neutral. So if I'm starting with blue, in order to get more neutral, I need to add those other two primary colors, right? So the other two are yellow and red, which make orange. So there's two ways to look at it. You can think about adding orange, or you can just think about adding yellow and red. Okay, again, thinking about the value that we've got going on, I'm going to test that here. See, I want it to be darker than the sky. And we can always adjust later. And that's a pretty neutral color that I've got going on, which I'm okay with that. I think my the hardest thing for me is that I want to totally cover the canvas and trying to leave some of that orange shining through is my hardest thing to do. But that's our challenge for today. Got to accept the challenges, right? So that's that color. And then what I like to do when I'm working with a background hill like that, is then warm that color up slightly. I'm going to use a little bit of red this time and a little bit of white. Warm it up. I'm going to switch over to my, back over to my smaller brush. So I'm, I'm kind of combining both, both the block in and the finish with these background hills. So we're we're moving into adding a little bit of detail to these back mountains. So I've gone over to my smaller brush and I just want to bring in, it's got to be lighter. Let's see if I can get this. And a little bit warmer, just a tad. Just use the corner of your brush to pick up those little bits of paint. I'm going to have to add some blue in. This got a little too runny. All right, let's see. Nope, still not light enough. I want to be able to see a difference between this color and the color that I've got on there, but just a slight difference. So here's something with the acrylic paints. 
If it looks too light, it's just about right. So if that jumps out a little bit too much, that's probably right. And what am I doing? I'm just adding some a little bit of another color in order to give a little bit of feeling like there's something going on on those hills. Maybe there's some trees, maybe there's something else back there, a little foreground. You know, you can play with that all you want. The key is to keep your, um, your edges soft. So this is way in the distance and you want to keep those edges soft. You don't want them you want them blended. You don't want to see anything crisp back there. So should I, what, I, what did I just do? Blue with a little bit of orange in it, some white, just, just finding different colors. And I'm not going to get bogged down on this. But you can see how this is just fun. I just enjoy doing this. I enjoy playing with the colors and seeing what's going to happen. That's the trick is with a background hill like this, don't get anything too dark because then it'll jump it right forward and you don't want that to happen. My paint is really wet today for some reason. All right, I'm gonna stop playing with that, but you get the idea. Blend your edges, have fun with it, switch up your colors. Get that hand working. Get your hand starting to think about painting. Gonna stop there. All right. All right, so that's that background hill, which we may have to change. We'll see. So let's let's just jump in and get, get these values in here. So we have these background trees that we're working on next. Um, all right, so these background trees here are a light, some light greens, and they go into shadow, so there's some shadow area to them and some light area to them. But let's just try to get that overall value back there first, and then we'll come back and play with the detail in it. So uh, let's make a green, and I want this to be kind of a neutral green, so I'm going to go ahead and Take some of my Indian yellow. I've got some of the hands of yellow in there too. And I'm going to add ultramarine. Whenever I want a green that's going to be kind of neutral, not too bright, I'm going to add ultramarine because it just muddies up the green. If I wanted a real bright green, I would use my thalo blue. So ultramarine, some Indian yellow. Let's see what we've got there. Okay. We want to keep these in the background. Don't want them to be too dark. And because I'm looking at that and it's just about right, I know that I need to go a little bit lighter because I'm working with acrylics. So I'm going to add a little more white to that. Trying to keep with my big brush and stay fairly loose. So maybe some of that orange will survive the process, but you never know. That's a pretty good value. Um, probably don't like the shape. I don't, don't like the fact that it was dipping down right in the center there. So instead, I think I'll kind of come over like that. This whole area back here is our sunlit field. So let's start with, it's a pretty light color, so let's start with white. And let's add some Indian yellow to that first. And let's see where that takes us. It's, it's light, but it, I think it's a little too light. I'm not getting enough of the chroma of the yellow coming through. So I'm going to add some of my Hansa yellow to that. And we can always adjust later. And we're going to talk a little bit about gradations to keep things from standing up like a wall which you'll see when I put this one flat color on here, this is just going to stand up like a wall instead of looking like it's going back in space. But we're going to address that later after we get past the block in. 
So what I'm doing right now is I'm squinting my eyes and I'm looking at these colors and these values and I'm deciding if I like them or if they're working. And um, what's not working for me is how dark this hill is and how chromatic it is. So I always like to hold my painting back and squint my eyes down and then I see that I've got this too chromatic and I've got this too uh, evenly, this is too even, I need more yellow and less of that background hill. So I'm going to bring this up just a little bit, just because I don't want those shapes to be even. I don't want them to be the same amount quantity wise. And I want to lighten up that a little bit. But you know what? It's in that tacky stage of wet right now. So I'm going to come back to it later and do it after it completely dries. Whenever the acrylics get to that stage where they're just kind of a little bit tacky, then adding more paint is just going to make them gum up. So you don't want to do that. So instead, just let it dry completely and we'll come back later. No harm, no foul. All right, let's get some dark green going on. Um, I think I want a nice chromatic green. Let's just fill in all these green spaces here. So I'm going to start with my thalo blue this time. And I want it to stay dark, so I'm going to stick with Indian yellow. And again, we're not as worried about color right now as we are worried about getting this value that we want. And I want this this shadow area, especially here in the front, to stay nice and dark. I'm just going to throw that in there, and I'm not going to try to really solidly cover the background because I want some of that to show through. Picked up that orange. But I want to get that dark in there so I know where I'm going. Now once it gets up here, in this area, I'm going to have a gradation from darker here into the lighter colors there, the lighter green. So let's just take that phthalo blue, add some Hansa yellow this time, which is the lighter yellow, and a little bit of white, just to see where we're going value-wise. Again, just slosh that on there, and don't try to cover completely because we want to leave some of that orange. I, I keep to saying that, but I'm telling, I'm saying it to myself, so I remember to leave some orange. All right, let's let's fill in our shadow and light areas over here, and our trees. So those trees are not just green, but they're very. They've got a lot of dark neutral in them, and that way too, having those dark neutrals in the in the tree lets the colorful background shine through a little bit more. So I'm going to start with my thalo again and add my Indian yellow, but this time I've got blue and yellow and the last primary is red in order to neutralize that. So if I add a little bit of my alizarin crimson, which is a dark red, I'm going to start getting a very dark color, dark, dark, and it's going to get very neutral. So you can see it's still leaning towards green, but it's very dark. So again, let's just get some of this in here without locking it in super solid. But we will know that this is where we want these colors to go. The fun thing is that with this orange, we can also come back later and add some of it back in to kind of recreate if we if we cover up too much, which is pretty much inevitable when it's me working, but so you know, it's not right in the middle. This little window shape here, this little peekaboo, is shifted over to the left. So remember that as you're blocking in some of these shapes, that you don't encroach on that and and push it back towards the middle, because that's just something that the eye wants to do. Our brains like things symmetrical. Okay, I'm going to make up some more of this green with the blue. 
phthalo blue, Indian yellow, and alizarin crimson, which gives us a very neutral green dark. Just a little bit more of it. This uh, has got like uh, rose coming out a little bit, and I just have an indication of that closer together back in the background, further apart when they get to the foreground. I'm just, I'm just reminding my hand that that's going to be in there. All right, the other thing I'm reminding my hand is that we're going to have shadow here in the foreground. Let's lighten this dark up just a tad in this area and add a little more yellow to it. All right, so this is all going to be in shadow. And then we have these little streaks of sunlight that come in um, along here. So there's one down in here. I'm kind of painting around where that streak of sunshine is going to be. And then there's a thinner one back here. It doesn't have to be exactly the, how it's placed. Don't worry about that, but just get your mind thinking about, okay, we're going to have this shadow here. And this spot right here, right along the right along the edge, is going to be really dark. And that very dark edge, then, is going to make this really light background really pop. This whole area is dark in here. There's also a little bit of grasses and... Uh, that are in sunlight that I really liked. And I've got them right here against the edge of the canvas, which I don't like. So instead of that, I'm going to move them here so that it they're part of this little bit of, of sunlight going through. So I'm going to remember that I'm going to put that in that area. And then this part will be in shadow. And the reason I'm moving those is I don't like the bright contrasty things right along the edge of my canvas because that draws the edge the eye to the edge of the canvas and off and that's not something you particularly want all right let's make a, a brighter green to add into where those sunlit areas are going to be so I'll start with my yellow i'm going to add just a touch of phthalo see how i just use the corner of my brush and that really uh quickly takes over. Adding some white that I had there just to, to try to get this value. So I know I'm going to put this in here. It's going to be a little sunlight coming in here. And maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll find a little more sunlight over here or something. Maybe, maybe some of it's going to come in here. Maybe these will add a little more interest. I'm just thinking about changing it up a little bit and having it to where those little beams of sunlight also catch a little bit of those bushes as they go. Painting is a process, right? It's, uh, it's about experimenting and enjoying the process as you go. And you never know what's going to come of it. So over there, we're going to use some lighter gold kind of like back there only a little bit warmer so i'm going to take my indian yellow add some white to it and i want it to be a little bit warmer so i'm going to add a little bit of my naphtha red just the corner of your brush it's really important just to get to where you uh you understand that a tiny bit will go a long ways. This is all wet, so it's blending together, but it will remind me that I want to put that in there later. All right. I want to also add lighter greens around the edges of these. We'll have our dark in the center, and then as it moves out, it's going to get... Well, actually, I'm rethinking that a little bit. Generally, I like to do the opposite. When I'm doing something in silhouette like that, I'll keep it pretty dark along the edges, but then once you get into the middle, I'll add some 
lighter colors and some variations of color to give it more form. So I'm going to go with my uh, ultramarine blue and yellow. That gives me sort of a neutralized green. And let's just get some darker color up here. I want to define all the edges of my trees and get this really established in my mind where I'm going. Not finished, but just thinking about it. All right. I think I got my head on mostly straight about this. We'll see how it turns out. I'm going to call that the block in, and it's much sketchier than I normally do a block in. But, you know, it's all about experimenting, so we'll see how that goes. This is dry now, so I can think about making the adjustments I want to make back there. And I can come back with my final pass through. So, so that's kind of the, the idea is that you can you, you hone in on it, get the big shapes, and then move into the small shapes. So this sky, I'm going to mix up some more sky color. And it's nice and dry, so it's not going to blend as in there as much. I'm going to use thalo, a little bit of thalo again. I could have started, I could have just done this in this blue pile, but this got really neutral. So I want, I want to go back to some brighter colors. Also adding ultramarine. I, I like the combination of thalo and ultramarine blue for a sky. I think it's just uh and then I can, it can be cooler and more towards the phthalo at the bottom. I'm also moving a little bit lighter with this sky. I'm going to thalo. This is thalo. I'm making this blue more thalo for the bottom. Uh, also, the thing I don't like is, um, uh, let's see, first, more white, lighter. Yeah, lighter, lighter, lighter. Lots of paint. This is our final uh, pass, so lots of paint. I don't want to have to go back and change it later. I want to get that gradation lighter here. And then darker up above. Gradations are so fun. I just love gradations. And, you know, when you're working with acrylics, the only way you can do those gradations is to do them while they're still wet. All right, so I've pretty much gotten rid of all my orange. <laughs> kind of knew I would do that, but that's all right. I'm happy with it. All right, put a little bit of this over here. I'm going to go ahead and darken this up just a little bit more. I want to keep these trees, so I'm experimenting and doing something a little different. I want to keep these trees very loose and have a lot of light in them. So I'm going to go ahead now and add some more sky into this area before I add the green trees around it. And I usually do it in the the other way. I'll usually add the sky holes afterwards. But I think I'll just try this. And it, and it may not work at all, but you know, we can say we tried. So remember, this is sky. This now behind there is not sky anymore, but it's mountain. So you can't have sky holes where there would be mountain. Let's see if we can get some more mountain color. Just taking ultramarine, 
But all this orange I made earlier, adding a little orange to it for neutralizing purposes. Got two neutral, going back with more blue. Just adjust those piles of color. They get too far one way or the other, just add back in the other color. Here's some blue. Let's see what I've got there. That's still very greenish compared to the last one. I don't know if I hate it though. I want to get it in here so that my sky holds behind here are the right color. They become mountain holes instead of sky holes. Trying to stay with my bigger brush to try to stay looser. That's a key if you want to stay loose. All right, all I, I think I'm happier with that background hill. I don't know, something about it is bothering me. But I'm going to leave it for now because it's not going to end up being that much in the final product. Um, instead, I want to go back into these greens here and start getting some uh, of the variation. We've got shadow, dark, medium, and light. Dark, medium, and light. Whenever you want to see, whenever you want to have form, you have to have that shift, dark, medium, and light. Now that dark, medium, and light may be from very dark to very light and medium in the middle like you would do in the foreground or in something that's very far into the distance, then your, your window closes in and your dark, medium, and light value-wise is much closer together, but it's still there. So let's start with this very dark green and bring some white into the edge of it here. I, I want to keep, keep that dark pile, but I want to just use some of it and lighten it up and see what I get. See if I like, that's kind of interesting. I'm going to switch to my smaller brush because I'm working in a smaller space and I want to get smaller globs of paint on there. I'm looking at the painting I did before, but I also know that this painting is going to end up a little different. So I'm, I am comparing it to itself more so now. As I move into the finishing uh, parts of the painting, I more and more move away from my reference and more into just thinking about what's going on on this canvas. So that's that same color and I added some ultramarine blue to it to get a different color, but when I tested it there, it, it's gone too dark. It's not staying in my narrow value range. So I'm going to slowly add white to it a little bit at a time until I can get a color that's a different color and a slightly different value. Adding some blue back in it. So you see it's just kind of adjusting and shifting. I wanted to also move this, these colors that I'm doing over here a little bit so that they can be behind these trees, just little bits. All right, I'm moving quickly into adding yellow and adding white because I want to work with this color back there while it's still wet so that I can blend these colors together. And you know, it, I'm always looking for just pretty colors, colors that sing together. Um, and they may or may not be natural looking, but if I get if I put a color up there and the combination just really pleases me, then I'm happy. Adding more white and more yellow. Just getting these, I'm not really thinking about what's back there. I'm thinking about getting these color notes. Let's get these color notes in there. Let's get some globs of paint in there. 
rinsing my brush, drying it off mostly so that I can blend these edges. This is the background and I don't want to see a lot of brush strokes. Again, a matter of preference, but I just prefer my backgrounds to stay really soft. We'll blend this edge a little bit more in a second one once we come into the yellow. Gosh, I'm still not happy with that. I think it may be because that purple's gone new too neutral on me. I'm going to start with ultramarine blue and white. And I'm going to see if I like that. Yeah, see, that's prettier to me. I know it's not neutral, it's not natural, but it's just prettier to me. And I'm painting because it pleases me and it's pretty. All right, I'm going to come down and reshape some of these background trees a little bit. Try not to be symmetrical, but just to give that a little more shape. So that was just ultramarine blue and white. And to me, it's just a prettier color and I like it. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to add a little more white, just a hair of red, just, just, just a hair of red to it and white to give me, yeah, holding my brush very flat now because um, there's getting to be a lot of paint on there and I want it to just stay and not pick up the paint that's below. Added some of that white as if, you know, the, uh, you remember our light's coming this way, so I'm thinking about the light hitting this sides of these little mountain parts a little bit. Leave some of that shadow. Rinse my brush. I'm, I am referring to my eye to get the color right, really. I'm not trying to copy what I did before, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to feel the painting. Rinsing brush, drying it off, blending these edges. I like those soft edges in the distance. Don't want anything too harsh. So you can play with this kind of stuff forever, but just that's my that's my method is just to blend that distance. Adding a little white to that green I had before. You see the effects of that. Oops, too much. Adding some blue back. You see the effects of this drying darker in acrylics. I wasn't paying attention to where I was mixing and I pulled a bunch of that orange in there, which I don't want. So that's just ultra this time, ultramarine blue. So yeah, that's the effects of that drying darker as that nice light color I had go on completely disappeared in the as it dried. By disappeared, I meant it got quite a bit darker. Ah, too much water in there. Don't want the water in the paint. See how when you add water to it, that starts, it starts getting transparent and non-covering. I don't want that. I want just to be able to put down the brush stroke and leave it as it is and uh, not have what's underneath it coming through. All right, just some, I'm going to stop playing back here. This is so secondary, but I, uh, I enjoy doing this. Drying, drying it off. So when you want to blend, you mix it, dry that brush back off. Otherwise, you'll get that dilution of the pigment. Anyway, kind of fun, just something like that. We'll move on. I always keep myself, the thing I tell myself to keep myself from 
spending too much time in one area is I, I'll come back to that. I always tell myself, I'll come back to that. And most time I realize I don't need to come back to it, but it gets me off of what I'm doing. So I move on. All right, this is Indian yellow and white. Adding this in. We need all this Indian yellow over here too, but first I'm going to blend into this area here. Hey, we're talking about, I want to talk to you about walls. So when you have a space like this that you want to go back to flatten out in the distance a little bit, you need that gradation again. So in the distance, lighter and bluer. So I'm going to add just a touch of ultramarine blue and some white to that. So I get a color back here that's lighter and bluer. See. And I'm going to stop for a minute because I want that to blend in back here. I don't want to have a harsh line, so I'm just going to blend these lines together. And as I'm blending that, I'm going to wiggle my brush up a little bit so that that's not one straight line, but I've got some little inlets into the where the trees are. Blending, blending. So it's blended enough back there. Okay, then as we come forward, we're going to add a little more Indian yellow to that so that we get a color shift going on. And I still haven't added my shadows in there, but I'll do that in a minute. And then a little more Indian yellow. Okay, so those gradations really will help you get a feeling of distance going on when you have a space like that. But I want to take all of these colors and continue them over here in these spaces. This is going to be like behind the tree trunks. And again, I don't I want to try not to cover up all my yellow or my orange, but I do want this color to come back and Continue back here, real loosely. Um, I do need to get my shadow in there. Let's look for a shadow color. I'm going to start with ultramarine. I'm going to add a little red to it. I want my shadows to be kind of purple back there. I am a great lover of purple. Um, I think I added both of my reds to that. And I'm going to add some white to that. I'm going to see what value that brings me. I don't want this to be too big of a jump back there in value. And I don't, I think I want it a little yellower than that. Because remember, this is this yellow color in shadow. Let's see what this color looks like. Pretty neutral. You know me, I'm probably going to go back and add more blue to that. And I'm going to add some more white. I don't want this shadow back there to be too dark. Let's add some more ultramarine. Hoping to... That's going to go... Hmm. I'm going to add a little more red to it. Bring it a little more purple. And then those are darker colors, so I need to add white. Let's see if I like that any better. Got a little thin one going on back here. And a bit thicker one going on here that follows all the way across. Something like that. We'll come back and do more. You see? You see what I did there? We will come back and do more, but I'm going to take some of this yellow. Yeah. 
use it to blend out that shadow a little bit. And if I go to the edges of the shadow where it's, I'm getting kind of canvassy, um, then I'm blending it out just along the edges. That's kind of fun. Now I'm coming back into some bigger shapes. So I think I'm going to move back into my medium sized brush now for a while. Ooh, something I'm really n noticing is how um, le how cool this these greens got on there. So probably after they dry completely, I'll come back with some warmer greens. But those that that's the kind of give and take. I'm just kind of constantly working with the painting, but I want to be able to squint my eyes now and really start seeing that distance. So in order to do that. Let's do some trees. What have I got going on? Let's start with our dark. Phthalo blue. Alizarin crimson. Indian yellow. Let's do some dark. Okay. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? I'm going to... I said I was going to go to my big brush, but I lied. I'm going to go back to my smaller brush. I want to get those smaller shapes. So let's take, let's move this even more red. I'm going to come up here and I'm, I've pulled a little bit of this dark, but it's quite a bit more red. And I'm going to lighten it up just a tad till I can see a hint of red. So I'm going to establish my, where my tree trunks are going to be. And I'm just going to randomly pull some up. You notice I'm going way past. Ooh, that's just not red enough. Let's go even redder. Let's go redder and I just want something really warm. A little bit more um, Indian yellow in it to go even warmer. So don't get symmetrical. If I do that, call me out on it. Try to change up your sizes. Uh, of your tree trunks so you got some that are bigger and some that are smaller and all we're doing is getting this idea in here try to try to move quickly with this we want to keep them pretty dark because th this is our silhouetted trees so they need to be dark some thicker some thinner some of this brown will be up in here, too, because there's branches that peek through. So I'm going to get some brown going up here. Here and there, everywhere. This stuff, this is going to be different down here. Don't have to worry about that. That's going to be that stuff. Oh, I like this brown along the... I have some of this in the original where this warm color is here, too. I like that. Oh, remember we're putting our our light our light bush right there. We got to remember that. Try to get enough paint on here to cover. And we'll just leave that real loosely. Get that other stuff peeking through. And then we're going to go to our dark green. When I'm, um, so what do we got? Thalo blue, Indian yellow. I make a big pile of this green that I can adjust this way and that way. Um, when I'm doing loose kind of trees like this, I like to shift the way I'm holding my brush to where I'm holding it this way versus like a pencil. And that just helps get a little bit more of a looseness to your brush stroke. So I'm squinting, and I'm not looking at my reference anymore because I'm just looking at the way these trees are establishing themselves and what I like about them and where they're going. Super green here. I'm going to add a little bit of red, especially along the edges. I want to neutralize that just a tad. I'm not putting it in my whole pile of green, just in 
some of it. Keep in my also being very small here. Squinting my eyes. Squinting is so important when you're painting. So you kind of get that what it does, what squinting does is take out the detail and helps you just see the big shapes. I know I want this to kind of connect here in a couple spots. I'm gonna go across these. Just getting a feel from the of the overall shape of these trees. Oh, and one thing that I do when I'm doing this kind of thing is I really change the way I'm holding my brush. So I'll flip it over and I'll change the orientation of my hand, my arm, so that um, it changes the brush stroke. And I'll change from doing very flat to the canvas to doing very tip edges of the canvas. Over here, I know I want, I don't want this orange right on the edge because I don't want that to draw your eyes. I'll get rid of that orange. Okay, that's that's some darks that we've got going on. I want a little bit dark here. I want this to connect. I don't want. All right, scribble, scribble. Think of scribbling. All right, so now let's, Let's move into some other colors with this green. So let's add some yellow to it and some white to it and get some different colors. Around the edge, I'm going to keep it really neutral and um, loose. And then as, as I move in to the center a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit more lightness to it. Um, because that's going to give me some more 3D shape. That's going to pull that out a little bit, which is what I want. And I'm going to keep that down here. Connecting my shapes, connecting shapes. And move around. That's another thing. Don't get stuck in one place, but move around. Okay, that color, eh, I want, I want cooler, I want, what do I want? Let's try cooler. Let's go with some phthalo. This is where um, it gets fun and exciting because you, you, you try to start just reacting to the paint as you're putting it down. Reacting to the colors and harmonizing with each other. Reacting to the shapes. And you can feel it. I feel it in my in my belly. I feel it in my belly. I feel it in my in my heart. I I don't know. You you start to feel this energy rising when you when you're working um, when you when you start letting the the paint take over um, and start responding to it. You start feeling your hand responding to it. And it's, it's really tough to talk <laughs> at the same time. Back and forth. So bringing in back in some more darks. If I squint my eyes, I can see whether or not these sky holes are being effective or not. Okay, I know I want to come in there um, with that dark. I know I want these this to these are kind of a different tree. These are some kind of a slightly different tree than the other tree. So they've got maybe they're maybe they're pine. I don't know what they are. I don't I never know the names of trees. I know the I know them. I know them by their face, but not by their name. Kind of like people, huh? But I'm giving that more of a... Uh, that kind of a, a branches. And these over here, 
I'm giving a little bit more of a rounded, deciduous kind of a look to them. All right, I'm going to leave that for a minute and let that settle and, and have fun on its own and, and remind me later what it wants. Um, while I do some... Well, let's see. Let's see, what do we want? Let's go with... Hmm... Let's see. Let's go into this area. I want I want to I'm just wanting to get some of this blue in here. So this is ultramarine blue and I'm going to add a little bit of this red. Let's see if we can get a pretty enough color. We may have to let's go back to thalo. I want this to be dark, but I want to have sort of a purpley color. Um in here. Ooh, I kind of like that. Slightly lighter. See, the value's just right, so there, so it needs to go lighter. I want to get some of these. So these were blueberry bushes, and the blueberries were gone, so I didn't, couldn't really have blueberries in there, but I wanted to have just this color in there. I want, I want some bits of this color because it's so pretty against the green. So we just added some of that in there for fun. And then we can come back over it. Um, we've got these bushes going on. Let's get some greens going on again. Go back to my greens, but oh, what do I want to do with these greens? Let's try adding some more thalo and see where that goes. Ooh, I like that. So bushes, it's as if they're like up here, there's bushes. There's like a big row, so these are bigger. And then as they go back, they're going to get smaller and closer together. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to paint in. I'm just going to loosely, and I like to every time I go back to the canvas then switch it up a little, the color up a little bit, added a little more uh, Indian yellow to that. These are going to, I mean, this is looking more like there's actual blueberries on there. I'm, I'm liking that. I'm going with it. Okay, so bigger up here, bigger shapes up here, and then as we get back into the distance, they're more just See how I move that brush around? Get get some interesting shapes going on that aren't just the normal. Don't don't control your brush. Don't control your brush. Let the brush dance. Added blue to that to give a darker bottom to this row. I don't want this orange on the corners so much because I don't want the eye popping over to my corners, so or my edges. So I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to try to keep the orange going on in there. I need some... I want this all to stay in shadow. So I can go a little bit lighter, but I don't want to go a lot lighter. But what I can do is just shift the color. Warmer and cooler in the color. And slight value changes. Because if I pop something really light over there, I'm going to lose my shadow. But because that's... I think because that's, yeah, it's looking pretty good. I like that. I'm trying to stay random. Thinking about smaller shapes, bigger shapes. Change the color. Again, gradations. As you move from one plane, a further plane to a closer plane, the colors and the values shift. I want... Bigger shapes up here. Bigger shapes. Dark. To my two blues. Dark. Dark base in there. Get rid of that orange on the corner. Leave the orange where it's interesting. Darker. Add some red to it. Now I'm going to get dark. See that dark 
lots of paint on the brush, avoiding my orange, that I, a little bit of orange I have left. Smaller shapes in the back. Pulling those up. Randomizing. Plenty of paint. Ah, covered up too much orange there. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, let's just add some orange back in, huh? Told you we could do that. We have the power. So I still have some of that orange left over from before. Just put some in there. See if we like that. We'll leave that for a while and decide if we like it or not. Let's, uh, let's, uh, ooh, I love that purpley blue in there. What did I use? Ultramarine. Let's grab that. That's bluer. That's kind of fun too. I like that. It's always good to have, vary the color. Got blue coming out. Love it. Maybe in this area, just in this little bit of an area, a little bit lighter than here. Just popping in some of that color because it's pretty. We were thinking about keeping this lighter in there anyway. Let's uh let's go with our greens on our path here. Here's some, that was Thalo and uh, Hansa. Let's add some ultramarine to it. It's not as dark, but I'm going to leave it and see how, see how far it darkens down so I can get some variation going on. What's going on over here? We just got random stuff over there. Let's see. Ooh, I like that. I want some of these bigger shapes. Bigger shapes up here. That's interesting. Dark, dark back here. Some dark, dark back here. Yeah, we need that big in there for that orange. That's interesting. Okay, I think I keep saying that's interesting. Sorry. I want some of my dark, dark again. Red, yellow, and blue. Uh, red, yellow, and blue, red, yellow, and blue. Okay. I want just the centers of these two. Not much redder, much redder. Some of these to be darker. And leave that. I got this nice dark I can... Lighten up some of this. I'm going to leave that really loose. Let's see what we got over here. The way. Yeah, I don't mind that. Okay. Pushing, pushing up just to soften that line a little bit. Maybe something's like that's going on there. I don't know. I like that line there, though, because that line gives us a real contrast. And, and man, your eye just goes right to where that dark and that light come together there. I wish I had left more orange in there. But I'll probably screw it up if I do it now. Let's see. Red. Yellow. Lots of yellow. Ah, got into my green, got too excited. Let's go over here. Yellow, red. My brush is dirty. It's a mess. Let's see if I can tap in just a little bit. Do 
that red is fun, isn't it? Look how that red pops. This is a more uh, red orange than the other one was. I really like it. Put some down here. Put some over here. Fun. All right, okay. We're just going to finish off this little painting here pretty quickly with this um, this sunlight area and this grass. And I am going to go back to my bigger brush on this because I just want a, a shape. I just want some shapes in there. So let's see. I think we were doing the dark, were we? So let's do the dark, blue and yellow, and we want this to just be uneven. Let's get this, I'm just going to go and take some, let's start with this red and I added white to it. And I just want to get this little smoosh of grasses here. Using my big brush and just pulling it. Get a little smoosh going on. Some over here. And then if that's going on there, then there's going to be a dark version of that. So red, yellow, blue makes neutral. Pick whichever ones you want, but just pick a red, a yellow, and a blue. And I'm leaving this a little bit more towards the uh, red, gives it more of a brown, so that I can pull in some of these shapes here. So in other words, where, where this is brown grasses is in the shadow, I really like that warmth. It's going to there, be there in shadow and in light. And then as it got more in the light, brush is getting really dirty. Let's go to the smaller brush. All right, so it's getting even more in the light over here. More yellow, more white. Let's see. When you want a nice clean brush stroke, just wipe your brush off. It gets all the excess weird bits of paint that have been hanging around from something else. So let's see if we can Add some of that. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Let's get this green here. Adding yellow to my green pile and a bunch of white. I just want this to be a very warm, warm kind of, because that warm sunlight is affecting it. So I'm using both of my yellows. The Indian yellow is a little warmer. Let's see what we got. Sunlight's coming. Got to squint my eyes now to try to see some sunlight. Maybe it's hitting this bush right here. Let's see if we can get this warm sunlight. Holding uh, very, very lightly to the canvas, my brush, right now. Just barely, barely touching the canvas. But I like that, except that the um, I'm going to mix it in some of the darker greens, just so that it's just touching the edges of that bush. Maybe some of this darker green along the edge of the sunlight. So let's get some variations of colors going on back there. And we let that really dark so we would have that nice contrast right at the edge, but I can pull in a little bit of these other colors just for something to go on there. Um, Gotta, I gotta tone this one down just a little bit because it's really stepping out there. All right, I want to bring in some 
I really like that. I like this light, dark, light, dark as it move, it's moving back because that's, that's catching your eye too, these little steps of light, dark, light, dark. I'm going to pump that up a little more with this blue. Um, I'm going to go blue, white, and add a little bit of red to it. Let's see what color we've got. Just right here in this light area. So I've used the blues here and I've used the yellows there to kind of do that. And, and let's pull in our dark, dark blue, red, yellow, dark, dark just to have down here at the base. Why? Your highest contrast, right? With that high contrast in the areas of drawing the eye. And this pulls the eye back inwards. And also helps with that because we've got this dark dark here, so we're stepping back with the dark. Don't cover up all your Orange, Karen. All right, that dark, 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 dark here. I really don't have much definition with the um, with the rose, but I'm okay with that. Maybe I'll just if I do this. You see, I said I was okay with that, and then I started playing with it anyway. It's what I do. It's the way I roll. Need a touch, a touch of lighter light on this. Ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring in the little gun. The, the, uh, this is a rigger brush. It's a very long, thin brush, and it's great for just little accent marks. And what I'm doing is making up just a little bit of a lighter light, and. I'm going to add water to it. Whenever you use this liner brush, you want to add water to it to get the consistency very thin. Um, because I just wanted a touch of feeling of grasses there and then a little bit of just dark down the bottom of it that that little spot will just give me a little bit of uh, interest I don't know didn't want that dark dark against that light I like that darker color of the don't want to lose the freshness of the brush strokes okay um, I, all the colors, I need some variation of color there. Um, that's what I need. So I'm going to bring in some red. Yeah, this is what I love to do. I'm just going to bring in some straight, uh, blizzard and crimson. And I'm going to pop that in a little bit. Here on this side, I'm going to add yellow to it. I don't know, just that little bit of the warm against the cool, I really like. Too much water on my brush. Getting watery. Don't want that. A little bit of warm against the cool. And then I'm going to bring in some, a little bit of ultramarine. I think it's going to be a mix of ultra and phthalo. Just for fun, let me see where that goes. Ooh, change the color of the sky there. Oh, I don't hate it. Kind of like that. Brushing that phthalo over there. And then, let's not get carried away, but I like a little bit of that. Ooh, I can get a little bit of that by just adding some white. 
Yeah, it just wants a little bit of touches of, you know how in the shadowed areas of, of, of leaves, you're going to get the sky reflecting in the most shadowed areas. It just reflects up into the, into the dark areas. Let's see what I can do here. Let's get some of this thalo glue. Ooh, isn't that exciting? I know it's too it's too bright, but give it a chance to settle. I think you might be surprised. Just put a little bit of it here. In the shadow, the sky starts reflecting down. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I want a little bit of just just a warmer green, but not too not too light. Um, just mixing what's got what's on the palette. Yeah. Again, looks too light, but give it a minute. And I'm only doing this in the foreground where you can see a little bit more detail. She said that she added some to the background. Don't want to do that. Let's cover that. You never know what fun colors you're going to come up with when you just start mixing them on your palette and seeing what happens. So that's why I like to do that. A little bit of this green over here. Let me get this dark here. Cover up this orange that's peeking through at the edge. Don't want that there. Don't want that eye to go to the edge of the canvas. We want to keep it inward. All right. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. I did kind of want to do some, I did want to take some like, a little bit warmer green in there, just right in the center. That looks too light, but I think it'll settle. Ooh, I wanted to take some, a little bit, because I've, I've got a difference between the two blue, the two greens and the two kinds of trees. So if I, if I take a, something it's very blue, bluish green over here instead of the yellow green. I don't know why it's there, I just want it there. That's pretty good. I like this neutral color here though. Let's put some of this right along the edge. Break up these edges a little bit. Little small shapes. So I don't have these, I don't like these really strong lines right along the edge. Anyway, you can see that you can just play and play and have a grand old time, which is what I do every time I paint. That didn't, that um, shadow needed to come all the way across. See if I can find a shadow color. This orange, blue, lighter. Switch my smaller brush. What I'm talking about is just right over here. This shadow needed to come between these trees. Otherwise, what in the world did that shadow come from? Bring my dark back in. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I don't know, I think I'm gonna stop there. Pretty happy with that. It's not pissing me off too much. So I think I'll stop with that.